Well, uh, hello again. Uh, today I want to start a new project. I want to build myself a Subu for a filter. And I found a really nice schematic. And uh, with some tweaking, I did this. I had been testing yesterday and it's working great. And it have a, a range from 43 to 228 Hz. It's adjustable and this is nice because you can you can adjust your loudspeakers, uh, your subwoofers to the sound of the room or uh, for me I'm gonna use it uh, on a PA system. I have two uh, 600 watt subwoofers and a dedicated power amplifier and I have to filter the fragrances in a proper way and this is the single way to do it with a subwoofer filter. Okay, this one will be uh, stereo in from the mixer and a mono out because you know this kind of low fragrances you don't really need a stereo uh, filter. At certain point, let's say around 150 Hz and even lower, you don't really realize about the left or right uh, because there are no instruments except the, the kick, you know, the bass drum and the bass guitar going so deep. If you consider like uh, the A note on the bass guitar it's 220 Hz. So it's almost, it's almost there and we have uh, the E uh, it's going down to 150 or something, I, I don't remember exactly. But anyway, there are really, really deep fragrances here and you don't need a stereo filter. Afterwards, I'm going to put this in my, <laughs> in my satellite uh, position or case. <laughs> and I, I use this case for many, many projects and it's still, it's still here around the house. Let's talk a little bit uh, about the schematic. Uh, so we have uh, we have an LM three hundred and fifty three here. It's a double uh, operational circuit with uh, GFAT, and uh, it's working great. No distortion and uh, very good uh, characteristics. A low, uh, low uh, power consumer, uh, also a low bias current. It's like 10 microamps or something. Anyway, so we have two filter, two filters here. The first one in here. It's a, it's a, it's a filter called uh, inverting bus filter. So, uh, if you want to modify the gain, then you have to modify this resistor here and also the air one. So, gain will be uh, LP1, this one here with air one. Okay, so we have a bypass filter here. It's a first order inverting bus band. Uh, filter with gain and here in this area uh, with this double potentiometer here is a double potentiometer be careful and uh, all these resistors and uh, the condens and, uh, and the capacitance here we have a, a silent key second order low pass filter and uh, if you want more about this, you can search for Salen, S-A-L-N-E-N -E uh, filter, and you can calculate it by your own, uh, own, your own uh, needs. But for me, the way it is, you know, from 43 to 228 Hz, it's more than enough. So we have the first stage and the second stage of the IC and uh, what else to say about it, this is the power supply and uh, we have a 7812 and 7912 for having a double 12 volts, differential 12 volts. 
Before starting working with this kind of uh, board, I have a uh, I have an advice for you. So try to use this kind of uh, sandpaper. It's P3000 and do it nice like this. Clean the oxide. You see, it's getting a different color already. This one is pretty wasted, so I'm gonna throw it away. I have some more. Put it here. Okay, there we are. So this is 270 says, but I know it's 3000. So let's clean it nice. Make it shine. That's it. Clean all the oxide here. There we go. And afterwards, eventually, I'm using a kind of flux. I did it myself with some uh, alcohol, a lot of isopropylic alcohol and some rosin, this kind of rosin. And this is a flux, a very light flux, but it's very nice because it's cover all the copper surfaces and uh, afterwards when it's starting uh, building your project it's much easier to solder and uh, it also keeps the oxidizing the process away from the board now this will be great for working this kind of flux is very it's very easy to do well it was something else in here but like I told you, rosin, alcohol, and there you are. You have your own flux, and this is great because then it can work very, very nice with it. Before anything else, I have to say something about this schematic and everything uh, I done here. Uh, so all the pieces, all the parts, ICs and resistor and capacitors and everything. Uh, it's from other old projects or from some uh, some parts I recovered from uh, from all the stuffs like this or like this. So uh, the idea of the things is that if you want to do it, you can you can reuse parts from old stuffs. You don't have to buy anything else because. Uh, if you are like me and uh, have all kind of uh, projects and all kind of uh, electronics around the, the working desk then for sure you'll find anything you need so uh, take it like a kind of uh, uh, reconditioning and uh, take it like a kind of recycle electronics okay so the first stage this will be my power supply uh, it's uh, a differential power supply with plus minus uh, 12 volts and I have the transformer here and this gives uh, 15 volts uh, AC and the power supply will be here somewhere you see and then I'll put a metal screen here eventually to isolate somehow the the active part of the things by the transformer and the power supply but for now let's plug this in this comes from an old uh, power supply anyway so it's pretty standard with uh, 78 12 and 79 12 and uh, i should have plus minus 12 volts here
Okay, so the first step it's done. I have uh, I have power here. Let's check it out. Plus minus twelve by the ground. There we go. Minus eleven point nine. Perfect. And plus eleven point nine. Okay, so now I have to put uh, these things together. So I'm going to have this connection and put some holes here. And the potentiometers will be will be up here somewhere, you know, for volume and frequency. And uh, then I think we're done. And uh, we'll do the final test afterwards. I'm getting ready to put the holes in for the connectors. In and out. Yes. That should be enough. Oh yes. Perfect. And the other one. Yes. It fits. So that will be the connections in and out. And uh, eventually I have to put the potentiometers on. And uh, step by step we're going to the final test. Okay, so the potentiometers are in the place. This is volume and this is frequency or tone control. And uh, while it's looking like this, I know it's pretty ugly. But for now I'm really satisfied because I don't have a proper case. I think it should be okay for now. Until I find a proper case, a proper metal clay, uh, a proper metal case. And afterwards, I'm gonna have a piece of uh, a metal or something, you know, right here, uh, connected to earth. You see, the potentiometers are all connected to ground. And uh, maybe I have a piece of metal here too, in between the transformer and uh, this thing here, and the filter and uh, it's time to make the connection, the final connections, you know, ins and outs and to see if it's working. Okay, so everything is in place now. I made all the connection, you know, the power supply and uh, the signal uh, in and out and of course now it's time for the final test. Let's see if it's working or not. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna have my uh, okay this is out and this is in. I'm gonna have my monitors on. Okay, here we go. Everything is set. All the things are together and uh, it's time to have a test. Let's see what is happening here. Do we have any sign of life? And uh, I'm gonna put on my uh, Yamaha monitors. Okay, so this, is, this will be out. And this is in. And that's my sound machine here. Let's go on power. That sounds good until now. Yeah. Is it running? Yes, it's running. Volume. There we are.
loudspeaker moving. Bye-bye.